Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So for this week's handbag gift bag, I'm going to be making this one here, or one like it. I love the way it kind of folds in and then it's all closed with that smaller section at the top and then you've got that little kind of handle. It just says it's a Comtesse from 1990. It says, this is all in the introduction to the book. So I just was flicking through whilst having a cup of tea and I thought, yep, yeah, I like that one a lot. So let's give it a go. So the paper pad I'm using today is this one that I picked up from the works a while ago. It was £3. It's their Make and Create range and this one's called Moments. Some really lovely background papers there. So I've gone for this pink. It does have the script on the back, but I just love that pink colour. And then I'm using this yellow with the pink speckles, which is this one up here. You've got some lovely florals as well. Um, you might still be able to get hold of this pad. So you want two pieces of 12 by 10. Yeah, 12 by 10. And along the... 10 inch side you want to score it half an inch all the way down and then rotate it so that that score line is now along the top and you want to score it four and eight just down to that score line so you're just putting these little markers in and then flip it all the way around so you're now working on the opposite end to where you just scored you want to put a little notch at one and a half and at ten and a half and then you want to score it six inches down to six inches, like so. Then using your stylus and a ruler, you want to score from those little notches down to the bottom of that six inch score line. So I'm just going to sit my stylus down and then line the ruler up and then just score like so. And then again from that side. Like so. You want to do that on both pieces. Next, you want to fold and burnish that score line. And then you just want to cut up those two score lines, like so. And then you want to just fold those long score lines so they're mounting folds either side. And then that six inch one will go in and then you can just pinch that inside now hold it together like this and then you just want to snip away you want to leave about half an inch this is going to remove all this bulk so it means you can get more presence inside but you want to leave a little bit there so that when you bring it together it will still hide your gift now just burnish the fold just so that's nice and crisp like so and again Like so. so that's now going to come in you can see we've already got the side there coming together next grab your glue and you're just going to pop a little bit next to where you've cut it you're going to bring this one around and then just sit that and you want to make sure this has got a perfect right angle because this is one of the corners of the base so just hold that there don't worry if any glue comes out you can wipe that away in a minute but just keep it there until it's grabbed Okay, if you then, once it's grabbed, if you put your finger in and push down on your table, you can hold it there a bit longer just to make sure, because it's such a small amount holding the kind of pressure of that corner because we haven't added any score lines to it. It's kind of, you know, it's stretching itself around. So just really make sure that's stuck down first. You can pop a peg there as well. Okay, then you're going to go to the other side and again, add some glue and then just bring that under. And then around again, making sure you've got a perfect right angle. What you could do is I haven't given the measurements for these pieces, but these are for the base. These are four by seven and a half. So to make sure you have got a right angle, if you lay that in there, you could use that then to make sure, you know, it's correct. Because if you were coming out a bit, say like that, you would know you can bring that in. But we're going to stick these in later on. But you want two pieces of four by seven and a half. Next, you want to punch two two inch circles or around that size you can score down the middle if you want but i don't want any score line on this i'm just going to cut roughly through the middle and then you just want to fold it in half like so so you'll have one circle will be for one half of this and then the other circle for the other half of the bag again just fold it in half so it all lines up like so 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to stick this around the corner. Now, if you just stick it like that, you see you've got a gap. So you, the idea is you need to roll the bag around this piece so it all sticks. You want it to follow the curve of the bag. So the trick is, first of all, line up the bottom of this piece so it lines up with the, the fold of the bag there. Make sure it doesn't go over, otherwise it won't stand up properly. But get that right in there, like so. And you see I've got my gap there, but now if I roll it and just push with my finger all the way around and keep doing this until that glue is completely dry. And now what you'll have is it's completely stuck and it's followed the curve of this piece because we've got no score line going up here. Now I have come down a little bit further there. Can you see it's overhanging? So if you just take your scissors and just snip that away, because like I said, otherwise it's going to affect the bag standing up. And again, now you get that really cool faux hardware look there. So you want to repeat that on the other side. Okay, so you should now have two pieces that look like this. We're next going to stick these so they're overlapping by half an inch. But the easiest way to line that up is if you stick one half of this down. So you're going to have two of these pieces, which are four by seven and a half. So I'm going to have this one in here and then we're going to stick this one. We'll conceal under here. Also, I'll just point out originally I cut a whole circle and then just cut up into the center and then wrapped around, kind of wrapped it around half of it, a quarter of it, sorry. So you can form these corners, but it was causing too much bulk on the bottom. So I've cut that away. And then I just thought, you know, what, you might as well just cut half a semicircle and then just do what I've done there. So if you know how to do those, I've featured this feature before, but I've not bothered doing the whole one today. I think it works just as well, just doing half circle. So yeah, so this one is gonna go in here like so. So it's gonna stick down. Now I may have to just trim that one a little bit. If you need to trim away at all, then you can. It's not gonna cause too much problem. So that's gonna fit in there. So I'm gonna use the quick grab glue just to get this in place. And then I'll use the Kalau when I stick the other piece on the very bottom. So just popping my glue all around the tabs here. And then just lay that one down inside. And then this one is gonna go in here. And you'll see it will overhang by about half an inch. See the, or overlap, sorry, by at least half an inch. So I'm thinking the easiest way to do this, you kind of need to do it kind of all at the same time. So I'm going to, this glue will give me a little bit of wiggle time. I'm going to add the glue onto here. Actually, no, I'm going to use the Kalau because this really will give me plenty of time. So I'm just going to go over that glue. So I'm just adding my Kalau glue all the way around here, like so. And then decide which half you want to go over. So I'm going to pop my glue just on half, you know, well, just under, I'm probably covering about a quarter of an inch because the glue is going to spread out. And I'm going to do it on that side and also on this side, like so. And I'm going to sit this piece in here. And you want to make sure that base piece gets right in, first of all. So get that base piece in. That's why the cloud glue is kind of good for this, because it's just going to give you that time to kind of get that in place. And then you can start bringing in these bits here. Now, what I would suggest is measuring the top here. So it's two and a half. So you want to make sure that both sides are two and a half inches. Yeah, spot on. And then you can kind of go in and uh, spread out the glue. And again on this side. Okay, so I'm pleased with that. So I'm a little bit out of the top. Like I said, we're going to hide all that now. So I really wouldn't worry. But it's all secure. It looks nice inside. It's actually a really good size gift bag there. Then with this piece, I'm going to add Kalau glue all over the bottom there, and then I'm just going to stick that piece so it covers it all. Next, I've got two strips of 12 by two and a half. So you want them to be the width of the top here, okay, because it needs to see cover all of that. So I'm going to stick 
this one down first. So you're going to have two inches overhanging. So I'm actually going to add my glue onto here first. I'm going to lay this one over the top and just make sure it lines up the top there and it runs flush with the bottom. And then again, repeat on the other side and just make sure they both join up at the top. Okay, what I've decided to do next, because I want to, I'm trying to work out how to do this closure. So I'm going to fold this piece in half back on itself. I'll hold it up in a second. Like so. You see there where I've just folded that back on itself so it lines up with the top here. If you see any of it like there, I can see a little bit on the side, cut that away. And then I'm just going to do the same on this piece. So this is going to reinforce the top. And then you want to glue those closed. Again, I'm going to use the Kalau. It's just going to really strengthen it. Then I have these two pieces here, which are one by 12. I don't need them that long now, but I'm going to stick that and then just trim off the top. This was using this embossing folder here, which was an older Cross 2. It's a big A4 one. I forgot I had it because it's not with all my other embossing folders. So I just thought that was a nice effect. So I'm just going to stick that one down on both sides. Okay, now I've had another idea. So I'm going to add silver across the whole of that top piece, which for me is one and about one and a quarter. So from where you, the, this cardstock, where the point of it is there, that's what I want to cover with the silver. So I'm gonna cut it to the two and a half wide, and then I'm just gonna stick it on and then trim off whatever's left. Okay, so that's stuck down. So now I'm going to, obviously I want to make this work as a gift bag. So I'm going to punch two holes right the way through. So I'm going to come down about three quarters of an inch and I'm going to come in three quarters of an inch on each side. So that's where I'm going to do my holes, there and there. So keep them pinched together, perfectly lined up. Like so, a little bit wonky, but you won't you won't notice it once the bow's on. And then I've got this pretty ribbon. I've got some hair straighteners here because this is really creased. These are inexpensive ones off of Amazon. They're not great for your hair, in my opinion, but they're perfect for ribbon and in your craft room. So I'm just going to take the creases out of this piece here. And I want to leave a handle again. I think that's about enough. And then the rest of this I can tie my bow. So there's the finished gift bag. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm really pleased with this style. I'll probably pop some tissue paper. It might even look nice coming out the sides actually when I get around to using it, but. I think it looks really nice. Love the uh, the detail. You've got the faux hardware there and then that little bit of silver on the top. Really pleased with that one. So let me bring in the inspiration again so you can just see. There's that side there. Where we've got this detail. I mean, you may want to leave all of the card. You know, I cut away. I guess maybe thinking about it, you could have left more in. It depends on the gift. If you've got something that's a bit bigger, then that's going to obviously get in the way, having that excess in there. It's just it's down to you, you know, cut it away or leave it. I don't think it makes too much of a difference. If you keep it in, you just, you're not going to see this detail. But, you know, once the gift's in there and who's really going to notice that, I don't think anybody will. Add a gift tag and um, it's ready to go. So I'll probably keep some of this scrap inside the bag so then I can uh, you know make a little matching gift tag when I know who I'm giving it to so as always thank you for watching today check the links in the description box below I'll try and link as much as I can in terms of the product that I've used today and I'll be back again next Wednesday with another fun gift bag thanks for watching bye